today I'm here at XYZ and we've come to look at the 3D printers that you now have yeah. to offer Jim. Now Jim, can you, can you talk me through um, this new technology that you're now offering? Well, the technology is actually not that new. Um, it's been around for about 30 years. What HP have done is they've taken it from being a prototyping machine into a full production machine that uses real engineering thermoplastics that any engineer would recognise. And, and I've always associated 3D printers with prototype work. Now this not, is not the case with the, the, the 3D printer, the HB 3D printer no. that you're supplying. No, it's, um, it, you can do prototypes on it, but it's designed to be faster, more accurate, and using plastics that you would use every day in automotive, aerospace, medical, so you can put the, the parts you make on this in anywhere. Right. Can you give me an example of the speed of this machine? It's approximately 10 times faster than anything else because it doesn't do, I'm afraid I'm going to wave my hands around here, it doesn't do what other printers do, which is work point to point. Other printers will work by laying down either a bead of plastic or by waving a laser over a plastic bed or by waving a laser over a vat of liquid. This one works page wide. So if you've got one part or a hundred parts, it prints the whole page, if you like, in one pass. So 80 microns of height takes eight seconds. So you've mentioned plastic, plastic sorry, mm -hmm. um, and the speed, mm -hmm. but does it, does, do, does it do um, other materials, metals? There's no metals on this. Uh, we get, get asked that a lot, can you do metals? The temperature ranges are so different, you couldn't do them on the same machine. But we have a roadmap at HP where they've developed three engineering thermoplastics which are widely used. Further ones will be rubber likes, elastomers, and then they're going to start using mixed materials as well. There's another machine coming out soon which will do things in full colour, which will be ideal for the design departments. But this is designed for designers and engineers and production. So this is a proper production machine that can yeah. sit alongside your subtractive machine? Yeah, like I always say, it's just another machine tool. And that's the reason why XYZ have got involved in this, because it is a machine tool. It does things differently, but for engineers, it's the ideal thing. And also, I mean, you, we, we, we discussed this machine briefly earlier mm. on, Jim, and, and you told me that it actually reproduces parts for itself. Yeah, it almost clones itself. On every suite of parts that there, uh, there is in the, uh, in the machine, there's three parts of the machine that, that you use to work it. They actually make 60 of its own parts. Um, I could show you some of them later when we go and have a look at yeah, the cabinet. Yeah, yeah. Walk, yeah. Walk. If we take a walk over here, um, one of the things we look at for design and uh, for practicality, if you look at these two parts, that part there is originally a part from the prototype machine. It's a standard machined piece of aluminium with locating pins and holes. What they do now is they print this. This actually goes into every machine. And what it is, if you can get that on camera, it's actually topology optimized. There's only material where you need it. It's only as strong as it has to be, and it works on those machines. There's another one just in here. That gear there. Those are printed for these machines on these machines. So I'm guessing as well, you know, this is reducing the cost of these components. Yes, it is. Um, these parts, um, depending on how much it weighs, if that weighs two grams, that's about eight pence. So effectively for the engineering industry that uh, before were making these components on subtractive machines, um, th this technology is going to save them a lot of money. Well, if you look at where this fits, if you were going to make a million of these, please ejection mould them. If you're going to make 10,000, there's no need to lay down an expensive tool to do this. Making tools costs money and takes time. There's also other costs that people don't think about, like you've got to service the tools, you've got to store them, which means they've got to have a building, which you've got to pay for. With this, your tool stores is a hard drive. Well, this has been a really informative um, discussion we've had here, Jim. So thank you very much for your time, and I encourage people to come in and get a demo from yourselves. Thanks very much. We'll have it running all day, all three parts of the unit. Please feel free to come and ask questions. Thanks, Jim. Pleasure.